At uh, DSI, you know, we believe that in most cases, when you're adding ignition to your environment, that in, you're natively adding the ability for remote monitoring with most of ignition's native feature sets. Um, if I had to narrow down the list to some of the top remote monitoring projects that I've done with DSI or that we've done, it'd be in you know, the chemical manufacturing space, food and beverage, textiles, uh, life sciences. Those are some of the, the larger ones. But in terms of uh, narrowing it down to just one, um, one project that we have with remote monitoring is for a textile manufacturer, uh, their MES and HVAC SCADA. Uh, the purpose of that project was to collect data from hundreds of machines, a variety of different platforms around their facility, and aggregate it all into one place where anyone can access it and use the data. We built the project in perspective and with clients running on around 80 TVs around their facility, operators' phones and laptops and technician tablets, uh, they kind of have every opportunity for remote monitoring right in front of them and they even use those same things in the plant. So within their environment, temperature and humidity controls were crucial for the quality of their product. So they believed that pushing for a more robust HVAC monitoring system would help cut down on waste and increase the product quality overall. So we developed an HVAC data form that monitors the air washers, chillers, waste systems, and all that good stuff so that they could always have a real-time view of any equipment in their plant. Uh, and one of the things that where this system really works well with remote monitoring is that it's all based in perspective. And what perspective gives you is the ability to view a system from anywhere on any device with mobile responsiveness, as long as you can connect to that system from that device. With, uh, as Kevin mentioned, a VPN that maybe your IT network has set up already on your phone or laptop, it can allow this company's maintenance manager to remotely monitor the facility, detect any issues before there's a problem, and keep in close contact with the technicians that may still have to be there, but he never has to leave his house to do that. One of the main challenges with a project like that is making data in the OT environment accessible outside of the direct local network. That's one of the things that Kevin touched on when he was talking about taking all that localized data and potentially putting a middle ground in the cloud uh, to add a little bit of security between those two environments. But that typically is one of the largest challenges in making a system with remote monitoring capability. In this case, they utilized the VPN and Ignition acted as the bridge between the OT and IT environments. And we were able to make this data accessible from anywhere without opening up their controls network to the rest of the world and making it easier for them to get to. Uh, historically, with systems like this created as local applications on an HMI or kiosk, it can make it difficult to visualize and use that data outside of the immediate area. So making it in a format with the web uh, mobile responsiveness of perspective made it so it was easy to use that data pretty much wherever you're at. With perspective, we were able to create all those traditionally local pages in a format that could be viewed anywhere by anyone with permission. And they can also pass that data into other business systems for other customer needs. So one thing that we tried to focus on here and a key thing with remote monitoring is that remote is really anywhere that's not on the plant floor, from your home, another facility, the corporate office, or even just an office on the second floor of the building you're in. Being able to access data without a trip to the plant floor is extremely valuable right now in this current environment. And you know, I do believe that even after everything is over, the tools developed and the time spent right now on building a robust remote environment will stick around and benefit all of us moving forward. I think you're right. Absolutely, Keith. I'm just curious, is there uh, anything you mentioned it in passing a couple of different times, but when you face certain challenges, like the challenge of you know, taking data from the OT environment and making it accessible outside of that direct local network, uh, any, any ways you might say that Ignition was particularly useful with the perspective module in accomplishing uh, some of the tasks you had, the challenges that you faced? Exactly, yeah. Uh, one of the really valuable things with Ignition is because you're able to utilize the gateway network to move data back and forth between two systems, it's really easy to, you know, like in Kevin's example earlier, have your local running system collecting data in that fully locked down environment, but then, you know, just over the gateway network, have one direct connection to a system in the cloud. Um, and that's the only door in and out of that network. And IT becomes a lot more comfortable when there's only one door and you don't have to let every client get into the network in some way. 
So being able to utilize the gateway network and view that remote tag data from the cloud uh, and then just have your, uh, your employees or users looking at the cloud-based system, it allows you to have a lot more of a lockdown environment that IT is a lot more comfortable with. Uh, so I, I really think that was one strong uh, area that Ignition helped out in with this project. That's, that's great. Listen, I appreciate you sharing some screenshots. Before I let you go, is there any, any other, even just a high-level project uh, in this or uh, another industry that you might want to mention where you were able to accomplish some remote monitoring? Uh, yeah, we actually have another project that's relatively similar. Uh, and what that uh, customer is doing is they are doing line extrusion and chemical batch processing. So they have facilities all over the United States. And so they're using remote monitoring on more of a facility to facility basis. So their engineers and recipe designers that are located in North Carolina can remote monitor a system that is running out in Texas and they can see how the system's running, make sure that the recipe that they've provided the system is executing properly, they're getting good quality product, and they can make sure there's no issues with the system in real time. Uh, so allowing the customer to be able to look at your system in real time from hundreds of miles away is really just the, the big value, I think, within perspective itself. It's one of its major core values. Um, and I think, like I mentioned in the beginning, almost any project with it, you potentially just opened up the door to be close to remote monitoring. You're maybe one step away with a VPN or something simple like that. But uh, as long as you can get connectivity to it, it's all right there for you. Hey, Keith, I just That's had a great, question Keith. come in. There was one that came in for you, um, which is how long does the Ignition server store data for monitoring? Is it possible to go back and look at historical data? Yeah, well, it really depends on the perspective you're looking at, right? If you've got an architecture, and I'm actually going to go back to Kevin's slides so that I can point, uh, it may make it a sure. little easier. So if you've got an architecture similar to this, and if you look at this Ignition server, it's going to be pushing data to that SQL database. In this case, as long as you've got space on your SQL database, you can store more data. And, you know, typically after uh, a, an extended period of time when there's lots of data logged, it may be better to move some of that data to cold storage but you can always have it there. Now, in the case where you have an edge gateway, the edge gateway that may be in the middle here between the main server and the PLC, the edge gateway is going to be able to store about one week's worth of data in the case of a network outage. So in this case right here, uh, this person utilizing this platform here could look at data here that is just making calls to this local gateway that's looking at the local SQL database and you could be looking at data that was a year, two years old if you wanted. It just depends on how much space you have and the resources available to you. Thanks so much, Keith. Great, all right. Any plans to bring Ignition into the smartwatch platform? Um, we have folks who are integrating uh, with alarms and uh, sending some messages to smartwatch. Uh, I, I don't know if it's applications or just the messaging system that's there. Beyond that, we don't have any immediate plans for a smartwatch client. Um, but if you're able to run a browser inside a smartwatch, you in theory could run perspective inside there. Uh, what Ignition platform open protocol or proprietary? Uh, Ignition is based on a whole variety of open protocols. Uh, we have one proprietary pro protocol called the Gateway Network, which is moving between uh, Ignition Gateway to Ignition Gateway. But everything else is the open protocols like OPC UA, MQTT, uh, HTTP, HTTPS, uh, and a whole variety of other protocols. There's probably, you know, 20 or 30 protocols that Ignition speaks on a regular basis that most of them are open protocols. And uh, one last question I will answer right here. What is the URL for the security hardening guide? We will try to paste that into the chat here um, shortly. So, all right, uh, back over to you, Don. Good, we're back here to NB Tech and uh, Esteban. So with that, thanks so much for the answers to questions, Kevin, and also for you, Keith, and your answers and, and presentation there. So now let's talk to Esteban from NB Tech. Uh, Esteban, can you maybe start like I did with Keith and give us a little bit of an overview of the industries that you've used Ignition for remote monitoring just as a broad stroke, and then we'll dig down into some uh, use cases. Yes, for sure, Don. Um, 
Well, the main focus for a remote monitoring industry is that we, we have used ignition is a uh, food and beverage. And these, in this case, the use case that I have to present, which is a biology museum. We also have some in ignition for remote monitoring in uh, water, wastewater and hydroelectric uh, generation. And that folks uh, have their own infrastructure put in place. But in food and beverage, and in this case, uh, we helped around with the infrastructure to have the remote monitoring properly. So I, are there any projects that uh, stand out to you that you want to maybe share some on today? Yes, I actually have this one right here, <clears throat> which is a, a project that we did for a bio, biology museum, which is uh, actually called by Bio Museum uh, in Panama. It, it is a, well, what we did is combine perspective and vision to create a full environment for all, for all users on, and, and two types of applications. So this is the facility. Uh, this is a very nice, uh, um, it's kind of an amusement park, but it's dedicated to educate uh, people everywhere from, uh, from Panama, from outside the country as well, to tell people what type of biology they have there. And um, they actually built up an aquarium recently. So one of the challenges they had is that the life forms in this place <clears throat> Can't, can't have a sudden change of environment. Uh, so a system like Ignition with perspective module helped around to be aware or, or the biologist used to be aware of the conditions of the fish and the life forms there because they're not only fish, but coral and other types of, of, of life forms there. So it was very important for them to have a very quick and very understandable a situation control about the whole aquarium and because they have ser ser uh, several tanks there. So this is the, the main, uh, the main uh, <clears throat> homepage. And one of the things that I really like about Perspective is the breadcrumb uh, possibility to design that. I think Kevin will talk about that later on. And you can go in and have a back, well, this is in Spanish, but you can have a back button for, for users to be up and down into the menu and have a easy access to the information they are looking for for ex specific systems. We have also built this in uh, ISA 101, which is a standard from the ISA, uh, to help around uh, users of the in industrial applications to have a very understandable environment for what with what thing is an alarm or what could be a diagnose something that you should be diagnosing and also the equipment status so we put this note here which is which is very useful because these uh some of the users are from the automation side but most of the users are biologists so they need to be aware of the situation really quickly so this was one of the <clears throat> visions, uh, visualization in vision. Uh, this is a backwash tank. Basically what they do is to uh, take uh, when, uh, from time to time when they see a necessity to clean out the water that it's in the, with the life forms, uh, with the fish and every, everything, they uh, take it to this um, area, clean it up. Uh, they have a skimmers so they can clean up, clean up the fat and some other or stuff that is in the water that they need to clean out. And <clears throat> this is a very, impo uh, very important part because uh, one of the um, most expensive uh, resources for them is the seawater. Because if they lose seawater, they have to pick it up from the ocean, which is a very heavily expensive logistic. So uh, this part is very important. And we build a, this screen for vision that could be shown in, uh, in a showroom for for um, <clears throat> for people to be there and look out the system, how is it running? It's kind of a more more focus on education, and we build up uh, this one for for perspective module, which is very very fast uh, into what the biologists needed to see. Uh, we one of the challenges that we had here is that the industrial automation uh, part of the, the of the working group. They were very much inclined to having something uh, like the slide that I showed before in perspective, but the biologists were most more focused on having metrics and situation control very fast. 
So we jumped into the conclusion that by doing a, a gathering meeting that the best way to go, it was to, uh, for the sake of the life forms, which is uh, kind of, a, as one of the clients stated, uh, the revenue of the biology museum. So what we did is uh, have this presentation, oh, I mean, this uh, visualization here, right here, which is very fast, and you can pick on pumps, UV, ozone, uh, valves, uh, analog analogic signals like ORP and pH, um, some other things, and you can go and go down into a um, into another um, a situation awareness from those type of pumps or those type of devices, which is which facilitated very quickly what information they could have uh, from from one place or another. Then we have this other example, which is a seawater storage. After they clean out the water, they have a seawater storage where the, the water is uh, clean enough. enough. The, it, it has to mature itself, as they put it, with some bacteria for the life forms to be able to um, accommodate to the new environment of this new water that mm -hmm. came out or would be clean. And we developed this other a screen it's somehow <clears throat> different in a way that it doesn't have like the device itself there uh, but i i think it was what meant it, it is meant for a user that is not exactly industrial but it needs to have some situation awareness very quickly about what has happening in the whole environment thanks esteban that that's a really good su summary on that any anything i same thing i asked keith i guess any of uh, the challenges you met maybe a, an example or two of how Ignition perspective module helped you to do that. You did a combination of vision and perspective for the mm -hmm. remote monitoring. How how was uh, Ignition helpful in meeting some of those challenges? Well, I I really appreciate the, this is this was our first uh, project using perspective, and I really think that one of the things that uh, was a challenge was as I mentioned earlier, uh, doing uh, explaining to the client that the that this the 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 same visualization that it could be it could have done in ignition in, i mean in perspective with the whole devices or the whole system but in order to to uh, deploy the project uh, more fast we were more uh, obviously more comfortable with vision but at the moment uh, everything could be have could have been done in perspective and but one of the challenges as i mentioned is that this awareness that you need to have uh, the device uh, shown up in the perspective uh, screen and we had to do some explanation and but perspective helped around uh, really uh, to do something like the information uh, icons to have uh, other types of resources that were easily put in place to, for the customer to be uh, to have a situational awareness that could be really fast uh, uh, a really fast checkup Another thing is that uh, the biologist itself, the user, the main user of this application, were most in inclined into using mobile phones and tablets. So perspective helped a lot with that because it was developed in a, a responsive uh, environment and it was very easy to deploy the application in those types of, uh, of devices. So as Keith mentioned, even though it could be a desktop or a mobile phone, the important thing is that if they are at home like they are right now, they could be ha they could have a situational awareness very fast and rely on some teammate that that, that probably uh, they are running like one one person in the facility one one other not, so they could rely on the the uh, person that is in the facility to take control on some of the some of the devices or the, some of the situation. 